Well, today we're going to take a look at the Radeon HD 3870X2, which probably is as old as the big bag. Well, welcome back to another video and right here we have the on HD 3870X2, which is a dual GPU in a single card, which uh, there are no more examples of it. And I believe this is a Dell model, since it has this cute little handle for carrying it around. But this was pretty powerful when it came out in 2008, and uh, yeah, it's not that powerful anymore. It served its purpose, but these are fun cards. I wish they made more of this style, but they don't because Crossfire and SLI are practically dead. And we're going to the IO ports. It has two DVI and one S video on it. And the S video might have came out by the time of the dinosaurs. Who knows? So before I continue to comment on this power connectors, it's a 8 pin and a 6 pin, but they are very weirdly placed. They, I mean, they don't see why they would place them right here. But it's what it was back then. And we're going to clean it because it hasn't been cleaned since at least 2008, for what I can tell. And we're going to benchmark it with games all the way from 2008 to 2013. So first up is Call of Duty World at War, running it in 720p in high settings and you can see that the game utilizes the GPU pretty nicely. And one core is getting way hotter than the other. It's a trend going forward from here, but it's working nicely, really stable. So I can't really complain, this starts off pretty well. And we're averaging around 47 FPS. Which is not a fantastic result. And now for GTA 4 and uh, 
it's using both GPU cores pretty nicely, but if you watch the screen, you see it's terrible. It's glitchy as hell. And we're averaging at around 57 FPS on 720p medium graphical settings, but it, I would never play this like this. So dual GPUs for GTA 4 is a no-go. So now here we have Batman Arkham Asylum running it in 720p in high settings and this is one of my favorite games when it came out it was so fun just to kick some ass as Batman of course but we get, we're averaging around 60 fps and uh, it uses both GPU cores pretty nicely it's quite even so no complaint here it's no weird things going on no stuttering and so on this is just a smooth gameplay, as you would like it. So now here we have Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Also one of my favorite games when it came out. Who doesn't wanna kick some stormtroopers ass? And we're running it in 720p in high settings. And it's also using both GPU cores pretty evenly. So I can't really complain about that, and uh, we're getting an average of 31 FPS, which I wish for more, but it's a smooth gameplay as well. And here we have Dirt 2, running it in 720p, high settings, and uh, it's also using both GPU cores pretty nicely. So we can't really complain about that, very well optimized. I'm getting an average around 46 FPS, which for this game it's not that noticeable that it's under 60, which most of us want. So for a retro build, this is quite awesome. So here we have Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, and running it in 720p, high settings, and it's also using both GPU cores really nicely it's smooth no stuttering nothing like that and we're averaging around 71 FPS but I would say it's more like stuck to 30 FPS but 71 FPS is what MSI Afterburner reported and Battlefield 3 running it in 720p in high settings and we're getting average of 45 FPS and it's both also using both GPU cores pretty evenly and nice so it's stable smooth gameplay but that is not the case for every game it will turn for the worst well Crisis 2 running it in 720p high system spec gamer is the preset for this and the benchmark did get messed up a bit but I would say it's safe to say that you're getting around 50 FPS in this game and it's also very smooth I did not expect it to be but it's also using both GPU cores almost to the max so it's pretty nice to see that this really shows its legs but something far worse will come to this card just wait and see well Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 running it in 720p high settings getting an average of 130 FPS and it's using both GPU cores absolute to the max but oh my god look at it look at all the glitching it's uh, terrible and some weird things is happening so I did eventually restart the game to see if it's just an error for the moment but it wasn't it became uh, even worse I even lowered the refresh rate of the monitor or in the game settings and it was still the same I did everything imaginable to perhaps fix it but 
It didn't. So Modern Warfare 3 and the Crossfire is not really best buddies. So that's one downside. Well, the Far Cry 3 in 720p high settings, running it at around 15 FPS on average, and oh my god, it is absolutely horrible. I wanted to puke and uh, cut my throat and do all kinds of weird stuff when I saw this. This is not what I expected at all. It was, oh my god, so bad. I don't think I've ever seen something quite this bad in my days. But maybe I lower the resolution and it would be fine, but I didn't want to do it. And uh, it's horrendously bad. Can't watch anymore. So here we have Grid 2. Running it in 720p in high settings, we're averaging around 42 FPS, and it's only using one GPU core, but that's okay because it's running it's running smooth. This was a good looking game when it came out, so I can't really complain. It's very playable. It's no stuttering and nothing weird glitching at all. It just works, but it's a bummer that it doesn't utilize our both both our GPU cores. And the final game is Tomb Raider from 2013. Running it in 720p high settings and we're averaging around 30 FPS, which is absolutely okay from for this game. But it's also only using one GPU core as the final game, as we can't really test any newer stuff since this doesn't support newer APIs for the bigger games, so we're satisfied with all these. Might come back for more one day. So after spending uh, almost a day and a half in just downloading and installing games and benchmarking them and so on, this card would fit someone's needs if they have a retro PC or anything of that kind. Just a collector's item because I have a you know, funny thing for these dual GPU cards, they are fun, and I wish that they were still made things like this. If games started supporting both Crossfire and SLI again, which is today is quite dead, unfortunately, but. For a retro PC, it would suffice. Maybe I should put together a core to quad or something like that and let's see how it was back then. But for the meantime, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one.